furry and fit. Surprising how quickly brown bear cubs put on weight. They're my first bear cubs. We haven't had any at Hagenbeck Zoo for 40 years. This is very exciting. Six days ago, Tapia female Carmina brought her baby to the world. Tapias are anteaters from South America. Zookeepers Thomas and Vet Adriana look after the little one. The little lady gets an identity chip and a selenium jab as a nutritional supplement. For that, we have to separate mother and offspring. Mothers get very aggressive when someone else holds their baby, as that's something only an enemy would do in the wild. The calf will probably start screaming, and mum won't like that either. We have to separate them, give the little one its jab, and then she can leave with her. Tapirs only have light stripes and spots during their first weeks of life. So that the mother leaves her little one alone at all, Thomas causes a distraction by sending the male out with her. Jingle, give me a Jingle, go with her. Come on. There you go. Have you found the placenta? No, I haven't. Um, She's probably eaten it. Yes, probably. Hello, little one. Hello. Come here. Come here. That's it. Yes, I know. It's really mean what we're doing to you. No, we just want to rub your belly. Come over here. Come over here. That's it. The selenium jab is supposed to prevent myasthenia. Yes, yes, I know. It's horrible. We're nearly done. Why are you making those noises? What are people going to think? That you're torturing the poor little thing. <laughs> now Dr. Adriana can insert a microchip in the baby. <laughs> That's nasty, I know. Do you want to check if it really is a girl? I'll look in a moment. <laughs> OK, now you have a number. Now the worst is behind you. It's a girl. Yeah, girl. See, that's it already. There's a good reason for the kids to have stripes. Young tapirs have stripes similar to young wild boars. They serve as camouflage in the forest. Enemies can't make them out so easily when their mothers hide them in the undergrowth. In the early weeks, they're often left on their own until the mother returns to feed them. That's why this little one was waiting here patiently, well hidden. That was a little bit mean of us, eh? But look, she really likes being scratched. Shall we open the door so that her mum can get back to her? She's running back and forth outside. I can hear her the whole time. Hello, Carmina. Hello, Carmina. Everything's fine, little one. Come in. Yes, look, we haven't done anything, I promise. We have nothing done, I promise you. New World porcupines are rodents. The female gave birth just a week ago, and now the little newborn is about to get his chip a kind of passport for zoo animals. Oh, that stinks. When porcupines feel threatened, they secrete a malodorous substance so that the attacker makes off in a hurry. Oh, it's sitting down there. I don't need a broom. Look out, I've got it. 
It's down here on a stone. I'll try and pick it up. Mm. Ow! Ah, look, a spine. They're hard to get out. Look, here comes the sweetest baby in the world. <laughs> Isn't it sweet? Yes, adorable. Yes. The spines are an efficient defence weapon. The barbed hook embeds itself into an attacker's flesh. Ow. Predators like pumas and martens belong to the list of the spiky vegetarian's enemies. Oh, wow. Ow, Adriana! Hold him. <laughs> Why is he doing that? It wasn't before. Nasty. <laughs> Fog has had enough. Volker doesn't like porcupines anymore. So, can you put your gloves on, please, Laura? Now, pick it up carefully under its stomach. Watch out. Hey, it's got stuck. If Volker carries on this way, it'll have no spines left at all. Oh, that really hurts. The spines must be very soft in the womb. I can't believe they prick like this. Hedgehogs are also soft when they're born. She's not even a week old, but the spikes harden fairly quickly. But while they're being born, they're obviously quite soft. Heavy duty for the safety of little bears. The Kamchatka Bear Brothers are called Vanya and Michaud. Now, at three months, they can leave their nursery. Their keeper, Uwe, prepares everything. We have to make the enclosure childproof. The same way we make electrical sockets safe and lock covered doors when our kids begin to crawl. The first thing we've done is fill in the large hole. The bigger bears dug it, and I'm worried that the little ones wouldn't be able to get out again if they fell in, because they're still so small. We also have to lower the water level in the trench so that they can stand on the edge. And the trench will also be padded with mats. Kamchatka bears are brown bears and come from the Russian peninsula of Kamchatka. Together with Kodiaks and polar bears, they are one of the largest land predators on Earth. Males can be anything up to two and a half meters long and weigh 500 kilograms. The females are smaller and lighter. Bear mother Masha shows her boys the enclosure. She's very careful with her young and takes good care of them. Should one of them fall behind, she goes back and carries him between her front legs. Masha is a first-time mother and a very young mother. That's why she surprised us a bit with her cubs this winter. Masha is just four. Uwe didn't expect her to give birth until next year at the earliest. The water's so far away, Masha. Someone's stolen the water. Thanks to the low water level, the little ones can still stand close to the shore. Brown bears are good swimmers, but the youngsters first have to learn how. You can see that the smaller one's a bit braver. He's the one leading. The other one's more cautious. It was the same in the litter den. Stay nice and close. At their birth three months ago, both of them weighed 500 grams. Now they're 10 kilograms. For us, they're really special. We haven't had bears born here for 40 years. And for the first time, it's worked. Their mother can rear them herself without humans having to help out with the bottle. Next, Uwe would like to turn on the shower for the two bear kiddies. Parima. That's the name that Keeper Thomas gave to the little tapir female. 
he makes an interesting observation. Tapia father, Jingo, also feels drawn to Parima. But in tapir circles, only mum rears the children. Tapirs are loners. He really shouldn't be offended. He's interested in the little one because she smells intriguing. It's something new. But the mother's made it clear that he should leave her alone. A tapir mother looks after her child for one year. She meets the male exclusively for mating. Tapirs aren't known for threatening behavior. It's strange that I'm allowed near the baby, but Dad's not. We just get on better, don't we, huh? I always bring you something to eat. Jingo doesn't. That's my advantage, huh? You do look after your little one, don't you? A good week old, and it's time for Parima to leave the den every so often. The mothers protect their children on trips like these. Come on out, you two. Come out. You're staying in the stable's no good. Come. Come on, mate. There are carrots outside, just for you. Huh? And you, little nipper, do you want to come with us? Your little ball of fluff? Off you go. Go and see what they're doing. Follow your mum. Get up. Get up, little tape here. Go on, follow your mum. Give me a Parima has a total mother fixation and won't move an inch. Next time, Thomas will lure her out with honey. That's the best thing about animals. They have their own minds. Things just don't always work out the way you'd like. Come on, Carmina, come on. Come on out. Take the little one with you. Don't fall over again. That's great. This is working really well. So you definitely don't want to go out. OK, we'll give it a try later on. See you later. OK, Jingo, now you've got all the food to yourself. They don't want any twits. More for the man, then. Enjoy it. These marmosets have whiskers like the old German emperor Wilhelm II, or Kaiser Bill. That's the name Emperor Tamarin. Thomas has noticed that they have young. I couldn't get a closer look yesterday because they were so excited. Now I need to make sure everything's OK. Yes. Within a given group, it is the exclusive right of the dominant female to have babies. Oh, there you are. Now, let me have a look. Yo, 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 yo. She also mates with all males in the group. As no one knows who the father is, they all look after the babies. The mother doesn't carry them about. The males do that. Come over here. Good. This one here is the dad. At least the daddy of the moment. At first, they quarrel about who carries the kids, but it's mainly the males. The ladies also have whiskers or moustaches. That's the dominant female. You can see it from her teats. The little ones can hang on really tight. They look absolutely fit. Nothing to worry about. So. Tamarins feed on fruit, tree sap, insects and other small creatures. In an enclosure, they share these with other apes, the sakis. Sakis would die for nuts and peanuts. Tamarins for raisins. Tamarin babies 
caused trouble in the monkey community. Not much fun, is it? The tamarind males often bite the sakis to keep them at bay. They want to protect their young. Let's see how long things remain peaceful. It can get really loud. The screams and the quarrelling can cause them extra stress. Oh, look at that. The saki female is also pregnant. She's already got teats on her belly. Initially, you can only sense a pregnancy. But I know that they bring up the young well together, so I'm not particularly worried. You've never had any problems, have you? Come over here. So. OK, I'll be off again. The one-week-old New World porcupine gets his identity chip today. Ow! <laughs> hey, look. Pack it in. They go right through my pullover. Keep still. A porcupine can have up to 30,000 quills on its body. Volker wasn't exaggerating. They really do go through your gloves. But it's bearable. By means of a cannula, Vet Adriana implants the baby's microchip ID under the skin. OK, let's take a reading. Hold him up. Let's have a look. It's a male. It's a male. Better check. Or is it a girl? Fur and skin folds can confuse. One can determine the sex by means of a single bone. It's a girl. Yes, it's a girl. A girl? Yes. That's why. That's why she's so prickly. The porcupine relatives have a penis bone that one can feel quite well, but there's nothing. This means that it's a girl. Have you thought of a name if it's a girl? A lot of people in the company have asked if she could be called Lisa or Lizzie or Lucy. Because they're so cute. I think Laura is a nice name. I think we should put him back so that he can get back to his mum. Just put her on the floor. You can see just how prickly they are, even the little ones. The big ones have really long spikes. In the wild, they have to deal with wolves and bears, and that can hurt. You can hardly get them out because they have this barbed hook. It's easier to deal with in the skin than in the jacket. But they're still so sweet. The Hamburg walrus babies Loki and Thor are one and two years old. They are the only walrus calves ever to have been born in Germany. Our two walrus calves have their birthdays coming up and we're expecting the press to turn up. That's why we'd like to find out how they react to a birthday cake. If it's your birthday, you get a cake, even as a walrus. A fish tart should please the mini walruses. These seals live in cold seas. This is why they have a very thick layer of fat. They are incredibly sweet. It's heartwarming. Did you know they have whiskers from birth? <laughs> For seals, the beard is an important sensory organ. They track down prey with their bristles. Unfortunately, I missed Thor's birth. I was at my in-laws when the phone rang. I got here in my little car on the motorway as fast as I could, but when I arrived, he'd already been born. 
The walrus baby was given supplementary food as his mother didn't have enough milk. After that, he developed really well, the little one. Normally, walrus children receive nothing but mother's milk for the first six months. All in all, they suckle for two years. The first time he was allowed out, he just shuffled along beside his mother Dinah with eyes like saucers. For him, that was the great outdoors. Before that, all he'd known was his box, then daylight. That was very exciting for him. Come on, come on, over here to me. That's right, look, a big wide world. At birth, walrus babies already weigh around 50 kilograms. Twins are extremely rare. The youngsters stay at their mother's side for three to five years. Despite the lack of mother's milk, Thor doubles his weight within three months. In the meantime, he weighs 400 kilograms. And now he's a chubby little chap. Small kids, small worries. Big kids, big worries. At the moment, he's not causing us any worries at all. Mature walrus balls can weigh one and a half tons and more. The keepers are curious as to whether the walrus kids will fancy fish tart. Oh, look, it's a Loki tart. Oh, that's great. I'll take a picture. Walruses search for their food in water. They find mussels, crabs, snails and octopus on the seabed by using their fins and whiskers. Vicky, the mare, gave birth to a baby in the night. The zebra gestation period varies from somewhere between 12 and 13 months. I'm really happy about this baby. I was expecting her three or four weeks ago, but I miscalculated. Zebras weigh around 30 kilograms at birth. I have been asked about names, but as far as I'm concerned, at first, there's no name. I wait until I see something or something happens that I can associate with a name. It might be a funny eye, then I'd call it funny eye. It just has to be a typical characteristic of the foal. That's when we start to think of a suitable name. Within a few short moments, a newborn stands on its own legs. Today, she's allowed into the bigger enclosure. She's already familiarized herself with her house and her mum, and now she can be introduced to her aunt, her half-sister, and her dad. Hello, sweetie. What would you like? I'll get everything ready. Zebras are flight animals and very shy. Tony knows that fresh maize will at least lure the older animals outside. Little No Name is then bound to follow. It can take a minute, it can take 10 minutes, and if it's a bad day, even longer. But there's no rush. I'll just leave the gate open, and then she can see the others outside. Her sister, mother and father. Eventually, she'll go out there of her own accord and stick close to mum. The mother and child bond is very close in the beginning. Some mothers will not even allow other mares of her own herd to get close to her foal. Virtual zebras live in family units. They consist of a stallion, often several mares, and the offspring. The younger animals leave the herd when they're between one and three years old and join another group. A foal like this has a lot of energy and wants to run around. 
She may be small, but we all know children love doing silly things. And the same goes for zebras. That's why I'm happy she's outside. Zebra foals have a fluffy coat and a rumpled mane. This is, however, only the case in the first weeks of life. Thor and Loki, the walrus children, are served with fish tart. Hello. Hello. Test party. The little walruses are soon consecutively one and two years old. Before their first photo shooting, they have to train the art of cake battle. She's definitely interested. That's something, at least. Look, we've baked something specially for you. That's fish. Look. Have a good look. Two-year-old Thor's reaction is restrained. He's probably thinking, it's got Loki's name on it, it's not for me. Neither of them look particularly enthusiastic. Then let Pelosa eat the fish tart. Look, we baked this for your daughter. Oh, she likes it. One's gone already. <laughs> A fully grown walrus can eat 30 to 50 kilograms of food daily. Next time we'll have to put more cream on it. Then they'll look adorable with their messy snouts. That's good enough for the photo, though. I don't like cake either. Maybe we're related. I prefer fish rolls, too. Pacific walruses live in the cold waters of the Bering Sea, between Alaska and eastern Siberia. The North Atlantic, off Canada and Greenland, is the habitat of Atlantic walruses. Yep, those are our bundles of joy playing together. It's nice to see how pleased they are to see each other. In the long run, walrus calves are bored by adults. When we are kids, we don't like hanging around with adults either. We prefer playing with other kids. And it's the same with them. They're far more active than adult walruses. That's always lovely to see.